Nix OS has had a significant issue with spiraling costs associated with Amazon Web Services and has called for community support to address the issue. As I discussed this huge problem that Nix is having in my previous video, where I talk about the unsustainable costs of the project, especially after Logic Blocks pulled their sponsorship for Nix OS, S3 bucket costs, and no longer could support them due to an acquisition. The estimated monthly cost was around $9,000 for those S3 buckets, but today we come with a brief resolve, at least temporarily, from the NixOS community. I want to talk about how they're going to support cash.nixos.org and encourage the Linux community to still provide ideas and join the Nix community to investigate further possibilities. Overall, I highlighted the sustainability of free and open source software, particularly when it comes to significant infrastructure costs, even though free and open source doesn't necessarily make a lot of money. So they require fundraising and support from communities in order to keep projects alive. Well, NixOS has also seen that fate, at least when it comes to their repositories, not that NixOS is going to be gone forever, but here is an S3 update and recap of a community call that they had. Basically, they went over financials, options that were discussed, and then they came up with the key priorities for the short term. Now, there is an update here that we're going to be talking about, which is actually exciting news because someone did step up to help them at least for the next year before they have to rethink things. But before we get there, let's talk about what the community came up for the key priorities of the short term. Zero risk. Provide and move forward with the resolution that proposes the least amount of change risk. As an example, our preference would be to stay on AWS in the short term if feasible. Costs. While the foundation made measures to always be in a financial state to support events such as this, we prefer to find a solution that is cost effective. So those funds can be used for more community related matters. Should it come to it, we have made sure that we have reserves and can support the current state for almost a full year. Longevity and scalability. We'd prefer a resolution that can be potentially more aligned with the next five to 10 years, proper SLA guarantees so that we have time to migrate properly when we need to. With that in mind, we are still optimizing for the short term for the two priorities above. This is because they didn't receive much of a notice, at least in my mind, from Logic Blocks, who had been supporting them for quite a long time. And some of the short term solutions that were discussed in a general update during the call storage has offered an 80% discount for pricing until we double our usage and describe their system as being similar to Tahoe L LAFS. And then you have the Cloudflare R2, which a lot of the community members have been pushing towards. The foundation had an initial call with Cloudflare team on June 7th. We provided an overarching review of Nix community, the current situation, and dove into opportunities to collaborate based on the Cloudflare OSS program. Next steps will be a Cloudflare team is taking the discussion internally and will revert in the coming days. Number three, we have been in contact with AWS throughout the week and awaiting a response to meet with the OSS team. We expect further information in the coming days with the primary goal of exploring a sponsorship. And finally, migrate billing to the foundation. Basically, if everything in the short term fails, they're going to have to migrate all the billing to the foundation's current money pot, but I don't think they're going to have to with the latest news. And about 10 days later, they did receive some updated news, but I do want to talk about the OSS, what I'll call grants, from these big companies such as AWS. What is nice is that there is availability to receive heavily discounted hosting and support from these big companies when it comes to free and open source software, which is a fantastic thing. I'm very glad we're in a state of support from big companies to further the development in open source software. We're talking tens of thousands of dollars of grants available, and let's see if NixOS solves our issue through one of these grants. But before we talk about that, smash that like button for me, subscribe below. Let's get to talking about how NixOS is planning to solve their issue, at least in the short term. But before we do, let's actually talk about how much NixOS requires from their hosting services as far as it comes to storage and network usage. Really, it's all about network usage. And we'll look at a few graphs here given to us by NixOS and the NixOS Foundation. Here we can see how many requests are being made per day over a month. The average request is 574,000 per day with an average of 2.6 terabytes of transferred data. Now you might not understand how this translates to money. How many terabytes are required to pay, I don't know, let's say 10 bucks or 100 bucks 
for a month. Well, we'll see that in a moment here with another graph, but I just want to show you on average how much they transfer over in a day, as well as how many requests that they get in a day. Quite a bit on the cache.nixos.org repository. But going down here, here's another very interesting graph to look at because this shows peak performance or peak times where the requests come in as an outlier here. We have 1,000 requests. Well, you might be asking, why is it only 1,000 requests now? Well, that's 1,000 requests in a single minute. That's right. Per day, here's a 95th percentile per minute in the last 24 hours. So we're looking at a 24-hour period, and each of these peaks can be thought of as per minute basis. So, for example, right here, we peaked over what seems to be like 3,000 requests in a single minute. And you have a bunch of these impulses throughout the graph in a single day. So you must be able to support all of these requests all at once as your maximum, which means you have to have better hardware, better storage support, all this fun stuff in order to be able to actually handle this kind of traffic. When it comes to the bytes transferred, the 95th percentile in a single day, they've transferred close to five gigabytes of data, which may seem like a lot or a little to you, but either way, they're bound to pay per gigabyte. That's right, per gigabyte here. We're not talking unlimited ingress and egress traffic. Let's now use a different graph in order to represent and understand what those costs are like. So the price to transfer 50 terabytes of data out of the following providers, well, we can see here, OVH.com, zero, Scaleway, zero, Hedzner, $37, Linode, 500, DigitalOcean, 500, Google Cloud, $3,392, Azure, $3,450 AWS, which is where Nix currently sits with, with their S3 buckets on the AWS cloud. Well, $4,300 for 50 terabytes. And they're currently racking up around $9,000 per month in order to support their current repository hosting and traffic needs. Finally, you have the Alibaba cloud, which nearly doubles Azure or Google Cloud at $6,150. Now you realize why this is such a big problem. As the repo grows and traffic grows, we are looking at pretty wild figures. Basically, if we extrapolate this, NixOS is transferring around 100 terabytes of data per month, at least according to this graph. Let's talk about this fantastic news and why NixOS is planning to keep their repo around and open NixOS S3 update and short-term resolution. Rather thrilled to share some fantastic news to get us all going into the week. As many of you know, we've been actively exploring several options to secure the future of storage requirements requir following the end of Logic Block's generous sponsorship. Many of you have been rigorously contributing to this effort, which has been nothing short of amazing. We're excited to announce that the folks at AWS have committed to sponsoring all of our storage costs for the next 12 months. That's $9,000 a month. How wonderful is this great news for the NixOS community? Not having to go through in a panic. They have a year now to make different decisions on whether or not they want to move away from AWS or not. Anyways, let's keep reading. This, this gesture not only addresses our immediate concern about the short-term side of this effort maintaining stability, but also buys us ample time to focus on sustainable long-term solutions without pressure. Staying on AWS ticks all three boxes that we called out in the key priorities for the short-term resolution, zero risk, and we aren't changing anything beyond account payment information, zero costs, and longevity. The fast resolution that happened in right around 14 days is yet another example of the power and passion of our community who at a moment's notice once again r rallied around us. Special thanks to everybody in the community and that's why I made my last video in order to get people involved even though it was a little bit of a clickbaity title. I do agree with that, but such as what I wrote was Nick's OS is going to be gone forever or something like that. Even though it was clickbaity, it was really to get people moving in and realizing the importance of the problem Nick's OS was having. Enormous appreciation to the AWS open source strategy and marketing and open data teams for their commitment to Mila Zhao, I might be pronouncing that wrong, and to everyone else involved in this effort who worked at a fast pace alongside us to understand our needs and provide support. A special thank you to Bernardo Muir Costa, who has been working closely across teams to move this forward. Having this short-term issue resolved, Infra Team 2 
research and develop long-term solutions with greater focus and less urgency. We will continue to explore various options from data optimization strategies to optimal to potential partnerships with other providers. If you're interested in joining those efforts, please let the infra team know or jump into the thread. And finally, the details. Let's go through what AWS sponsorship looks like. The credits of 9,000 a month have been approved. AWS open source credits will be approved on an annual basis, meaning they're going to have to reapply for the sponsorship on an annual basis. Credits cannot be used for prior months. So since everything's within the time frame, they're good to go. Logic Blocks hasn't quite moved over yet, so they are still paying, meaning the foundation is not going to have to pay anything out of pocket, I believe at least. That's what it makes it seem like. We'll keep the AWS team in loop as efforts are made around the long-term solution. So if they end up changing providers, NixOS is going to make sure that AWS understands that. Next step, the foundation will, will work with Logic Blocks to migrate the payments to the NixOS account where the credits will be available. Overall, a huge update and a resolve, at least for the short term, in the NixOS repository. Thanks to the overall Linux community for jumping in, giving their opinions, and helping NixOS out. It's a beautiful thing to see such a great community come together and provide support and thoughts and help a team move forward. I want to know what you think about this short-term resolution in the comment section below, so make sure to post down there. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux, and I break them down into simple-to-read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.